I have told you guys quite a few times at this point how our our tomato fiasco that happened earlier this year. We had a bunch of extras that I started that ended up doing pretty well after I had already bought the nursery plants. So I just decided to stick them between our peppers. And that's because I just didn't want to waste the plants and we had the space, but they've kind of been growing like crazy and they've been flopping all over the peppers. We've gotten some pretty big storms recently and a couple of them have just like totally tipped out of the ground and broken. I was like, okay, we need to trellis these. But we didn't want to do like the cattle panels because cattle panels are kind of expensive. Well, <laughs> we had these T-posts that were, I think seven or eight feet tall T-posts, I think seven. And I was like, well, why don't we just use those with some wire? We'll just use like espalier wire which is like braided wire. So I had Taylor put these heat posts in at the end of each bed. And then we have one over there that's actually 17 feet long. These ones are 12 feet. And so we actually did one in the middle of that one since it's pretty long, a pretty long span. We just put the wire between them. So I've been working on tying them up. For the most part, they're sticking pretty well. The ones at the very ends are kind of on an angle so they slide a little bit, but it's not really a big deal at all. The rest of them are pretty tight. So I'm just taking the tomato, pruning them really well, and tying them up there. Hey guys, what are you doing? Eat some bugs for me. I've recently decided that I'm their mother for real and they follow me all over the place now when I have them out here and it's really cute. Guys, it is humid as heck today. Very, very hazy. I'm out here with the ducklings right now. I don't really know what the plan is for tonight. I'm gonna kind of just poke around and see what needs to be done. I might pull out some of the green bean plants so I can start kind of just prepping beds to flip them over to our next succession of things or our fall planting of things. those up do you ever bring a big enough basket out to the garden I filled this up three times today and I'm out of baskets I need to get more I thought I had too many not the case <laughs> okay I picked a bunch of the edamame there's still a bunch that's not quite ready and I was gonna pull all these beans out, but they are still producing beans. So as ragged as they look, I'm gonna leave them in for at least a little bit longer and see if they keep giving me beans. If not, I'm just gonna pull them out and swap this over because this bed's gonna be potatoes next.
my little daily lunch break. Yesterday, we didn't really do anything in the evening. We kind of had a bunch of errands to run. And by the time we got back, I had to make dinner and then it was dark, so we didn't do anything outside. But I have some tomatoes to harvest, so I figured I'd show you guys how many we've got. I think I might need to harvest some peppers as well. I'm kind of okay with letting the aroma sit on the vines a little bit longer. Like this one, I probably could have let sit a little bit longer. It'll ripen up inside in, a, in the next day or two. However, the heirloom ones, like the slicers, I feel like they get, um, they split a lot easier just because they have like a higher water content. Um, so I try and pick those ones a little bit early and let them ripen inside. That one's split or that's blight or something, I don't know. I have been waiting for this beast to ripen for so long now. I think this is the biggest one that we've got so far. It's massive. I have like very large hands and that's a whole handful. <laughs> it's not quite ready yet. This one is also a contender for biggest. That one's massive as well. so many more that are like almost ready too so we'll probably be picking a lot more in the next few days and I'm really happy to finally be seeing more blossoms because it's been so hot I haven't seen any blossoms on like anything in the garden besides like the squash and the watermelons nothing's been putting on nothing's been putting out blossoms because it's been so hot so it's nice to see some of those finally popping out again because it's a little cooler today. It's only in the 80s. Why not? Make some pepper in real quick. Oops. Took a little plant off of that one. I'm not picking any right now, but one thing we're definitely gonna grow a bunch more of next year is cubanelles. We added one to our like, to our nacho like bean corn salsa. Oh my goodness, they are absolutely delicious peppers. We will be growing a lot more of those next year. I'll probably grow like five plants worth of those so I can freeze some because so good. That was one of the best peppers I've ever tried. So if you've never tried cubanelles, grow them. I feel like this week I've been an awful vlogger, <laughs> but honestly, it's kind of been an anticlimactic week. Getting the birds in and outside right now is like a full-time job almost at night. Like it takes a solid half hour to get the chicks outside and then another half hour to get them inside. It's probably gonna take longer because we have them in the coop tonight. So it's kind of hard to see, but if you look up there, you can kind of see it. We just have this bird netting that we wrapped around part of it for now so they can kind of get used to it. Because downstairs right now, they're separated. Oh my gosh, they're escaping. <laughs> Chickens. Ma'am, you don't belong out here. Please go back to your home. <laughs> the setup's pretty janky because we just like threw it up real quick. We actually got this bird netting to wrap around T-posts down by our blueberries, which we're planning on planting tomorrow. We have 10 of them and they need to go in the ground um, before next week because we have stuff going on next week and we're not gonna be able to deal with it then. I'm just kind of like observing them tonight because obviously as you can see like they're getting out and I just want to like keep an eye on them because this is like their first time not being in the tractor outside and it's stressful. <laughs> 
I don't want to be chicken, chasing chickens or all around our eight acres. And our garden, which is like near their coop, is kind of like close to the road and it just makes me nervous. Anyways, what I was saying is that I wanted to show you guys, since I'm going to be sitting here kind of just like watching them and like keeping an eye on them and making sure when they escape that I can shove them back in there real quick. I figured I would work on our garlic. It's all cured at this point and I need to kind of get it like brushed off a little, peel off the like really dirty skins on the outside and work on braiding it. But we have hard neck garlic so you don't like do a traditional braid like you would with soft neck because you have these hard scapes like these these don't bend very easily if you bend them they break so i kind of came up with a way to to have like the pretty braids still um that you can hang up or hang up like this in your kitchen uh and i wanted to show you guys how i do it i think it looks really pretty still and i'm excited to hang a bunch of these in our kitchen somewhere i'm gonna have to have taylor put up some hooks for me <laughs> so i'm gonna clean some of this off really quick and then i'll show you how to do the braid pulling off a little bit of the bottom of these roots. You can trim them off, but honestly, I just can't find any scissors today. I have no clue where any of our scissors are, so I'm just pulling some of them off. And then I'm taking off just like the very top layer. I'm trying to leave as much skin on as I can, just anything that's like super dirty, that like very outer layer, but I'm trying to leave the rest of it on. We'll call that good enough. So you're gonna want twine for this. And scissors are really handy, but <laughs> this is what I could find. Like I said, I can't find their scissors, so I'm just gonna use these to cut the twine. And then you just need your garlic. So you wanna get like a nice long string of twine on the left side, lay it down. You can do this on a table, I'm just outside. So I'm doing it on the ground. So you're gonna wanna start with two heads of garlic, set them next to each other on top of your string, and tie them together with just one little loop. Wherever they tie together nicely is good. And I actually do a knot down here so it's nice and tight for the rest of the braid. Then you're going to want to take one more garlic, set it on top, and do another loop, tying that to them. You're going to take two more, set them on the sides, make another loop around both of those. This really is a lot easier to do on a table or like on your lap. Do another loop, and then you just kind of repeat. So I'm gonna grab another one, tie it together, tie them together. On these double ones that can get a little loose, sometimes I'll do a knot if they're trying to fall away. kind of see how they're like all over the place now. I just kind of clip my twine with whatever one's longer. I kind of just like wrap it the rest of the way around really tightly. And on the last loop, I tuck it in the back and pull tight. And it should stay tightened, but you can do a knot there if you want. And then I'll use this to like hang it up as like a loop. You can really tie these however you want. That's just how I do it. And then you have this pretty braid to hang on your wall. I think these are so cool. I think I need to start my process of wrangling the chicks back inside, but I hope you enjoyed that little garlic braiding tidbit. And if you do it, tag me on Instagram or in a comment here and let me know that you tried it and how it worked for you. Or if there's a different way that you do it, I'm curious about that too. Obviously this is just more for looks than like out of necessity, but I think it's pretty and I thrive and am motivated on things looking pretty. <laughs> so I thought I'd pass along this information if anybody else is like me. All right, ladies, are you ready to go back inside?
got something to say? Mr. Ego? Goodness. Wrong way. What the hell? Follow Dad. <laughs> Good job. Good job. loaded up all of our blueberry plants into the wagon and I'm gonna drag them down to the orchard and then we're gonna get the whole orchard area set up for them. Taylor needs to mow. We're gonna try and like burn, use the like weed burner and like burn some of the poison ivy vines that are down there and we need to dig some holes. <laughs> Crept into the sky to fill the morning air with warmth and light. Sounds of birds in harmony, and you there right next to me. Just in time for the heat of the day, it is time to start digging. <laughs> through all the storms I'm by your side Through days of warmth I'm by your side Like the stars and the moon in the nighttime sky I'm by your side
like zip ties and like that, right? ready to go sit on the couch and edit this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.